I've got 11 brilliant Android 11 features and updates to share with you, along with a bonus feature that we have been waiting years for. Years. Hey S'mores, I'm Shannon Morris, welcome to Morse Code. Android 11 is officially here. It ships with the Pixel 5 and it's currently being pushed to older devices as we speak. One of the reasons why I love getting Pixel phones every year is because I don't have to wait for those updates as every year we get some kind of pretty nifty new features. So this year, Android 11 brings a bunch of incremental updates as well as some new features that I have found myself just using naturally. I will give you an overview of my favorite features and little mini tutorials on how to access all of the new tech. If you are unsure if Android 11 is available for your phone, tap into your settings, choose system, click advanced and system update. If an update is available, you can choose to download and install it. Your phone will need to restart to install any kind of updates. But by the way, while I am on that subject, I did want to mention that in the settings, you can also click on security, then tap security update, and just make sure that's up to date as well. That's always important. Now, Pixel devices get guaranteed updates for three years from their release date, and other third-party manufacturers that work with Android will vary. So let's get started with number one. First is Live View with Location Sharing. This one requires your friend to be sharing their location with you. You can tap their icon on the Google Map and then open Live View by clicking the little Live View icon. From here, your phone will geolocate you and your friend and when you move around, you can see an icon of your friend in live view. Click start to get navigation directions that will lead you to your friend so you can walk over to wherever they are. But how do your friend share their location with you? This has to be enabled in the settings. What your friend would do is they will open maps, click their photo icon, choose location sharing, and then choose the person that they want to share their location with and how long they want to share their location for. Number two is smart reply. This this is a new feature that lets you instantly reply to friends when chatting with quick keyboard shortcuts. Now with smart replies, the Google keyboard will give you suggestions based on the context of the conversation. So if somebody says, hey, how are you? The smart reply would give you options like, I'm good, or I'm good, and you, etc., etc. This feature is only available in English on the Google keyboard called Gboard. This is not available in all chat apps, and it's not available in third-party keyboards. Number three. There's also a very cool new connected devices menu that lets you control your smart home straight from your Pixel screen without even opening the home app or talking to the assistant. All you have to do is hold down on the power button and a little screen will pop up showing you your connected devices in your home. These are all devices that I have already connected to the Google Home app so the Pixel can also see them. You can edit the controls available on the screen. You can delete any that you don't want there or rearrange them too. And you can also add new controls by clicking the three little dots and then choosing add controls and scroll through the available devices, checking off any that you want included in that screen. So I thought this was kind of cool. The smart washer and dryer that I have in my house are even on there. That's pretty neat. And if you want to disable this menu or enable it or customize it or just keep it from showing up whenever your phone is locked, you can go into settings, system, gestures, power menu, and then make any of your changes. And don't worry, all of my IoT devices are on a completely separate network from my home network. I know somebody's gonna ask me in the comments, and yes, I partition everything. Number four, we got some security updates introduced with Android 11, which is great because I'm always curious how Google is keeping my privacy a priority. So for one, they have included one-time permissions, which was kind of already available in previous Android versions. This basically allows you to give an app one-time access to permissions like your your location, your microphone, the camera. A user can authorize the app to access those permissions each time the app is used, so they don't get access whenever they're running in the background or they're completely unused. The permission prompt may show up whenever you're installing or whenever you use the sensors for the first time. Always, always read through these permissions and be very, very frugal about what permissions you give out to all of these apps. For privacy and security reasons, it's always better to limit those permissions and set them 
as necessary for actual usage of an actual app. And number five, along that same line are permission auto resetting for unused and idle apps. So if an app is not being used for a long time, Android is going to notify you and ask you if you want to remove permissions for apps that haven't been open for a few months. Not only does this let you know if you've downloaded applications that you may not care about anymore, maybe you want to uninstall them, but it could also take up valuable real estate in storage. And it also lets you know if any permissions were granted that don't need to be allowed anymore. You can tap the notification to review these apps, and you can also locate this setting in the app settings menu, which is where you can also mess around with permissions for each of the different applications that you might have installed. To access a specific app's permissions, swipe up to see your currently opened apps, then click the little app icon and choose app info. Click permissions to edit the access that your app has. You can also view all of the apps that share that permission, like location permission, for example, by clicking see all apps with this permission. Speaking on location permissions specifically, now device location in app and in background are separated more so. So users have to go through additional steps to allow an app to always have access to location, even if it's running in the background. So if an application needs background location access, a user will need to set the allow all the time option from the settings page. And number six, a behind the scenes update has been implemented for Play Store modules. Instead of waiting for an operating system manufacturer to push a security patch, Google Play Store's app integration will automatically download and install updates for critical operating system security patches instantly, instead of waiting around for the third party to do it themselves. This now works just like app patches do, where the Google Play Store will just do it for you in the background. Props to the Hacker News, by the way, for giving a detailed overview of these new privacy settings, along with some that I did not mention here. I'll put their link down below in the show notes. Now for number seven, Pixel will now make app suggestions for your home screen based on your daily routines and commonly used apps. So if you move one of those apps from the bottom row, a new suggestion icon pops up with one of your commonly used apps. You can tell that it's a suggestion based on the fact that it'll be haloed by the app's major icon color. You can then choose to pin this app to the bottom row, drag it to the don't suggest app option to remove it from suggestions, or you can drag it to your home screen to pin it onto your, your home screen. New applications will show up as suggestions based on the time of day or commonly used routines and apps. Number eight, Pixel now gives you some more control over how you select or engage with content seen on the screen. So for example, if you take a screenshot, you can share it, edit it, draw on it like usual, but when you hit done, you can save it to a folder or delete it. If you swipe up to your open apps, you can also select, which will open this OCR-esque menu where you can highlight specific words on the screen and search for them or share them with a contact. I think that's really cool. And number nine, the home screen is also a little bit more intelligent now. If you stick some apps into a new folder, the phone will try to automatically add a folder name based on the context of the apps. So for example, when I created a new folder for Hulu and Netflix, it named it movies. So good job, even though generally I use both of those for TV shows, not movies. Number 10, when having conversations with people, you can mark them as a priority from the notifications bar. So they will overtake any do not disturb settings and it will display their profile picture on the lock screen. And this works for multiple chat apps. Android 11 also introduced bubbles, which are little bubble icons that can float over any other open applications, which you can then open in a little overlay to respond to instead of having to switch apps. Bubbles look like what Facebook Messenger currently does on Android phones with a little bubble that pops up whenever somebody chats with you, and you can drag it to an X to remove it from your screen. To enable bubbles for chat apps, you open the app info, click notifications, click bubbles, then choose whether all conversations conversations can bubble or just specific ones or just none at all. Then anytime a friend sends you a message, a new one pops up, it'll show up under the conversations notifications on your quick settings menu, but also as a bubble on the screen. You can also enable or disable bubbles using the little bubble icon from the notification in the quick settings. Since it works in all of your different chat apps at once, it lets you take more control over your connections, especially if you use multiple apps to talk to multiple different people. If only every one would use Signal. I feel like that would be a dream come true. A girl can dream, right? 
And number 11, controlling media just got a little easier. If you have multiple apps and you are playing some media in between them, you can now see both of them within the same notification card. You just swipe in between them back and forth. You can also switch to connected Bluetooth devices from the phone speaker by clicking on that text that coincides with the device the media is playing on. This saves some room and it also makes it a little bit more fluid to find the currently playing applications. You can always turn off this card by going into settings and typing in hide media into the search to find that option, which is kind of hidden, though it was available under the sound and vibration settings for a short time. But hey, at least it's still there via the search option. And lastly, I have a bonus for you. Also built in to Android 11 is screen recording. Yes, you heard me right. Android 11 has its own version of screen recording, which is now just built in. It's now a thing. If you are a phone reviewer or an educator, uh, this is huge because we have been using third-party applications to record our screens for years. I have been waiting years for this feature. Thank you, Google, for finally, finally bringing it to us. I appreciate it. And that's it. So if you are new here, make sure to subscribe and a big thanks to my s'mores over on Buy Me A Coffee and Patreon. Comment below to let me know what your favorite feature is of Android 11. Thanks again to my s'mores for watching and subscribing. I'm Shannon Morse and I will see you next time. Bye y'all.